Welcome back. Uh, we're going to give get you into a little do-it-yourself action here uh, <laughs> this morning. And uh, we are, you know, it's the, the snow is gone. I'm dying to get outside and, yep. and get into the garden. And so today we're going to talk about some ways that you can kind of extend your growing season on the front end in the spring as well as in the winter. Because getting a jump start on spring, especially if you're planting yeah. things, is a great idea. And there's it? some things that like to be planted in the cooler weather. They really? do wet. They do better. Oh, yes. seriously? Yes. Okay. Things like lettuces and spinach and peas and some of the uh, broccoli and the cauliflower they like the cooler temperatures so, so now you can get them planted sooner now would be a little too early you think you yeah, want to warm bit? up the soil a little okay. bit because there's a couple of things you want to consider when you're planting you want to uh, there's soil temperature and then there's air temperature and the really for getting things planted you really want to focus on getting that soil temperature up and the frost out of the out of the ground okay. so that the seeds that you do plant or the seed they, they germinate got it okay so one of the things that um, I like to I think is a great addition to any any backyard garden and you can make them in a variety of different sizes is a cold frame a cold and basically frame. a lot of these ideas are we're kind of creating just mini greenhouses okay you know to give us that warmth that we need so we can kind of get a jump on things so a cold frame um, is very easy to construct and you can use um, you can, I use old windows old windows yes, reclaim windows so if you see somebody tearing a house sizes, down yeah mm -hmm. save those windows and the um, what you want to do is look over the window and you want to be sure to um, put some caulk so these older windows, of course, the, the compound around the mm -hmm. panes and so forth, gets the it glaze. breaks down. So I always put a nice bead of caulk around those areas just to make sure that those panes stay in place. So they don't fall out exactly, when you lift them up, right? Exactly. Yeah. And if some of them do fall out or if we have a big hailstorm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the glass in the, uh, is sometimes, uh, not <clears throat> you know, you have things that happen or somebody throws a rock, um, you could replace it with some plexiglass. Okay. You know, so that's a nice, you don't have to redo everything and get a whole new window. Got you can it. just kind of replace your panes. So get it cleaned up, secure all of your panes, and then what you, what you can do is if you have some raised beds, you can just set the window on top of that raised bed and have it so that you know it's warming that the sun is coming down so there's there. no no plants it. underneath here you're just not warming yet you're the kind soil. of warming the soil or you can put um, some of the seedlings and things that you have already started mm -hmm. and you want to get them to harden them off and get them outside you can put them uh, in your cold frame now. That's a shower door that um, I used for a cold frame in my own garden. Oh, and really? shower doors are great because they are um, temper resistant. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, and usually those glass, you know, they, you know, get rid of them and even with the design to, on there, that's okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, it worked great. Right. So I just built a frame, and you can build a frame that is, you know, sloped on the sides, or you can just a standard, you know, using the the body of your raised bed as well uh, to support it. But it's it really is a great addition to you know help you with hardening things off and again if you don't want to just set it on there and you want to have it more of a as a fixture um, put some hinges on the back side of it just some regular like utility hit, hinges cheapos, yep. yep and then put and then secure it right to the framing that you build and you could build these you know a little bit higher of course this is just for demo purposes it's a little shy because you want room for your plants okay now how long are you up. keeping these on obviously you don't keep them on your bed on your uh plants and when they're growing high enough to reach the top no of the this pain. is really but early how long, you can get how, early plantings put your seedlings in here to harden off uh, so you just wanna, several weeks or a month yeah and watch the ventilation right. as well so, so if it it's a really hot them? day you know prop it up so that you can get some air inside there so it doesn't, yeah, cook them, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so this is really a great way to extend your growing season. You can get out there earlier. It also extends it into the winter months. Um, you can put some things in there that like the cooler weather right. and you're still gonna be able to give them that heat. Uh, it probably keeps some of the moisture break. in there too mm -hmm. if you yep, have a top yep. on there. So. Great, great dish. And easy, easy, easy to build. Easy Piece construction. Okay. Exactly. Perfect. Another way um, to do that is the raised beds that you have, you can create um, row, floating row, hoop covers. Hoop and covers. Yes, so this is um, some plastic tubing that you can get at any home improvement store. And you right. can get it in like a variety tubes. of yep. sizes. Mm -hmm. Yep, and then I have some garden stakes. And these are just regular. With the little uh, notches on yep. the end. And yep. I just regular cut these stakes. down. Yeah, okay. I cut these down to the length that I wanted. And what you do is you'll put this in your garden bed and I you get it so that it goes over. Oh, I'm digging this idea. Yeah, Michelle. so put this in there, or you could use some rebar. And there's there's an example of you can see different sizes, so you can do different heights. Um, some of them are a little bit lower. And what you'll do is you'll create um, a series of these that run the length of your garden bed okay. or your row. So I had them placed probably a couple feet apart. Put them in there, and then what you'll do is you'll cover this with. You can cover it with some plastic sheeting. You can also uh, get it's a more fibrous 
type of a material, right. and then the water will go through it and so forth. So is this, this mainly is a really, for shade or what's a great, this for? Nope, this is a great way to um, protect them from the wind. It also helps maintain that heat that's inside. It it's, will. Yeah, so you're again, you're just creating that mini greenhouse effect. Okay. And you can get things out into the garden. You're protecting it, you know, from the strong winds sure. and so forth. But in the summertime, it's also, um, it, you can put the black cloth over the top of it. Yeah, that's, that's going to create one. Yes, and again, the water will penetrate through there, but um, then you, if you have some things that they're getting burnt up, it's too hot. Right. It's a nice way Because there's some to, areas that are totally shade, exposed You can shade to the some sun. things. And these are easy to install, remove. I really like this. I haven't the garden. seen You're this not before. having to really work around and how are too you much. And how are you securing this onto here? Then I just use some clips. You can use some clamps. Um, you could use, for the smaller, you can use clothespins. To hold it, you can also just put um, put it over, and then I use some rocks to secure as your sheeting, you know, kind of drapes end. over the edge. Or a lot of people just bury it in the soil. So let it hang over, and then put a, a clumps of soil on the top of it, and that'll weight it down enough okay. to hold it into place. And if you have a big bag of them, maybe some zip ties, and if you have them in, the, in yeah, your yeah, I shop. don't, I don't like to do something that puts a hole in the material. No, the zip just around the whole thing, yeah. But yeah, oh, the material secure, itself. Yeah, I see so what you mean. Okay. Clamps usually clamps work, work best, better. Yeah, yeah. Okay. or just securing it nice and tight that way on you can the ground reuse with it again. some rocks and set. Yeah, exactly. Okay, good idea. Exactly. All right. And I then, like that a lot. Yeah, it's a great okay. one. And again, you can do different sizes, mm -hmm. you know, and it's inexpensive and reusable year after year after year. Perfect. Another way to warm up the soil is using, these are cloches. <laughs> they look like jars they to are, me. I okay. know. And what they, they again, this is going to create kind of that little mini greenhouse effect, and they'll protect your plants. This is more so for this is individual. Your if you have some really specialized plants, um, you it's more for individual plant protection. Okay. That, and, and you can use. They have bigger ones. You can makeshift things at home. Upcycle uh, punch bowls. Oh, you know, sure. Mason jars. But these these have been around for I think they were invented like 400 years ago. Okay. So it's really an easy way. Just to go to your grandma's your plants, house. She probably has some of there. these but over But again, there. you want to be careful, you know, on when it gets really hot during, because you could, a lot of times you need that protection Because overnight. there's no ventilation in these so either. Cool. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So you'll want to prop them up during the day mm -hmm. and get, be sure that you get that nice ventilation through there um, and not... But burn, it really does make a difference plants. just by something as simple as this mm -hmm. is covering uh, like yeah, a starter plant. Yeah, or the milk plant. jug. You've seen where they cut up plastic, your uh, milk jugs? Right. That's another way to create a cloche. And the milk plants. jug itself, even though it's mm -hmm. not totally clear, it does the same basic yes, thing. Yes, exactly. It gets that nice and warm and protects them and from And actually the milk the jug has a, a top so you have a little bit of ventilation exactly. in case it gets too yeah, warm too. Yeah, and it makes too. it easy to water and so forth. That's so, true. Yeah, all good, right, so all these good different stuff. Options. Get out there and get started and get one of these built. And again, you can do one that's just small like this too. It doesn't have to be a big you know what would be interesting to do is, is do one in an area that have one where you do this, where you have the, what, what do you call this, a cold? Cold frame. A cold frame, cold and, frame. and next to it where you don't have it and see what the difference in the growing is between the two. You'll so notice that a might difference happen. for sure. And I always recommend get good gardening books. The vin and I love the older ones. There's some great information in there, especially on how to be very resourceful and a lot of repurposing. There things. you go. All right, now people want some uh, more advice as to how to get their garden started Follow us on early. social media. Of course, we have all the segments here at weareiowa.com or at Remake Life. All right, so we have good some stuff. great ideas That's here. Right. I love the I want to see, you, were, you said you used to have a greenhouse. So uh, I had, I had one, one of these. Half the side of my house was a greenhouse. We tore it down because it was falling apart, but uh, half have to say, and boy, is it a difference. Yeah. And, and if you can find some old windows like this, you can make this and put, put them in your garden. Take advantage of it. And we're going to do a comparison. We're going to find some of these and see how they do. Be able to grow things year round. That works. Stuff. That's nice. All right. It is 10 minutes.